<laughs> this is a good one. Oh, I love this one. I really do. Oh, this is so great. I'm Leah McSweeney, and this is Beyond the Box with Sneaker News. I have a brand called Married to the Mob. I'm from Manhattan, and I'm a Virgo. <laughs> All right, so I was 22 at the time. I had was assisting stylists, but like they were all total fucking bitches, and I hated. They were like the most miserable people in the world, and um, I was like, I just can't do this anymore. Like I'm just not like you know. I tried working retail, but it would like mess up my whole like party lifestyle, like whatever. I was like, I'm not. I can't wake up this early. I'm like, I just have to start my own thing. And so I would just joke around because people would be like, what, would, what do you do? Because I was always out and I was always brunching and this and that and just like living life and fucking whatever. People were like, what the hell do you do? And I was like, I'm married to the mob. Like joking around, obviously, if I was, like I wouldn't have to work. Um, and then MOB, I would just call my friends with the most official bitches. So then it kind of like that had to do with it too. And then of course there was the retail mafia and that kind of tied in. I feel like Obviously, like growing up and like shopping on Lafayette Street when, you know, it was X-Girl and Supreme and uh, Liquid Sky and then this vintage store, Smile on Nylon. And obviously like it's still like Lafayette Street is like still the place to shop, which is like crazy to me because it's literally where I was when I was 12 years old shopping and I'm almost 36 now. So it's nice to see that there's some things that obviously they've evolved, but like they're still kind of the same in a way. I was young unemployable um, and had a lot of guy friends that all had like streetwear brands, which were basically t-shirt brands and they were getting to travel for free. And I was like, this is fucked up because I wanna travel and I'm over here cutting up A-Life shirts and tying up the Supreme shirts and stuff. I'll just like make my own shirts and be like, fuck you guys, <laughs> you know? And that's kind of how it started. It was always geared towards women. It was always gonna be from my perspective, which is obviously female. And um, it was definitely kind of like commentary and, on what it was like to be in this male dominated space. And I'm not talking true, I'm just talking growing up in like the skate culture and New York City in general. The challenges of like hanging with the guys. Yeah, I mean, they definitely like, you know, as much love as I got from them and stuff, there was like definitely like, you're just, you're the girl. And I was like younger also. So I think it was like, eh, like whatever. I mean, I know I, I got some strange vibes <laughs> from some of them when like Mob really started blowing up. I mean, you know, Mob's been around for like 14 years, but there was definitely this time period where it, there was so much hype around the brand. And, you know, especially during the time when I was doing stuff with Cause and you know, things like that. and. I think some of the guys, it was like a little, they were kind of like catching a little, they were catching feelings about it. And I'm not that kind of person where I'm like, I'm a woman's brand, so, and you're a woman, so support me. Like, I don't believe in that shit. Like, just support me because you like my shit. Like, it's not on some like, you're a girl, I'm a girl, whatever. No, that's not like how I operate. But um, I think it's cool. In terms of like, female streetwear, like trending and like girl, like so many like, girls are like wearing fucking like Supreme and like everything. I'm just like, holy shit, you know, but this isn't new. Like I was, there was a, people doing that a long time ago too. You know who I'm impressed with? Stussy. I will always be impressed by Stussy because they are so great at being able to sell fucking $10 t-shirts to the stores in Bumblefuck God knows where that are so uncool and still be able to do this like dope fly shit and have their shit like, in the best publications ever. Like they are so able to like walk this line of like mass coolness, you know? I'm impressed by it, really impressed by it. Slap that Stussy logo on a bucket hat, on a sweatshirt, on fucking every colored t-shirt, sell it, sell it, sell it. And it's still dope. I was thinking about this because you know the first sneaker company that came to me to do a collaboration before anyone was even doing fucking this shit was Puma, but they didn't want to pay me. Yeah. And I have, I still have the designs and it was like based off Rainbow Bright. But yeah, like they didn't want to pay me. And I was like, that's crazy. Cause even back then I was like, wait, like I know my worth and I know that you want to fuck with me because like, it's going to give you credibility. So there's no way I'm just doing this shit just to be like, I collaborate with Puma. So then I said, no, I'm not doing it. And so that then I still have all the designs and everything. Cause I just found them on my computer not long ago. 
Oh, cute. Now I'm gonna be a YouTuber. <laughs> Just take, well, I've never, I don't even know what unboxing is. I'll take it out, it's probably better. Well, okay. Aw. Wow. Very nice. I love Chanel. And I base this off of a Chanel tweed shoe. And I wanted to put the toe cap, that Chanel toe cap, their signature toe cap, on this. But Jesse, Nike, was like, we can't change the silhouette or we can't actually make changes to the body or the whatever of the sneaker. You can only, you know, design it and put elements or whatever. So I went for like putting the patent leather around the that the toe part of the shoe. You know what? I feel like I might have I feel like somehow I got introduced to Sandy Bodecker. I don't know how. I was really good at like talking people people into doing things with me. And um but I feel like you know, I might have maybe emailed Sandy and then he put me in touch with Jesse, who I'm still friends with today. And then, you know, me and Jesse hit it off and um, I got him wasted at karaoke in Chinatown. And yeah, the rest is history. Um, but they don't send me any free shit. And I don't get invited to any other parties. Um, I think I, it's because I probably talk a lot of shit about them at the same time. So that's how the, I'm pretty sure I got introduced to Sandy Bodecker and then he put me in touch with Jesse. And that's how this, this sneaker came about. I don't own the trademark for mob. I own the trademark for married to the mob. So when you're working with a giant company like Nike, obviously you have to sign off on a lot of things like that you own every single trademark, every little mark that you put on the fucking sneaker is owned and legal and no one's gonna fuck with them, etc. So at the very last minute, I was like, actually mob, which this design, this mob design was uh, designed for a necklace that David Yerman's son made two of only, Evan Yerman. And my sister lost my fucking necklace. Sarah, you are a bitch. Um, so this is where that mob design came from, but I didn't trademark it because it was only on the necklace, you know? So Nike kind of flipped out. We had a track jacket that was also designed that had mom on it and that just got deaded. Like, I think I still have it, but it's, and it's on the internet, like photos of it, but that was deaded. Um, the sneakers obviously came out and we were like, well, we'll just take a chance and see if, you know, it's fine. I, I don't know how many pairs were made, not that many. Oh yeah, people were kissing my ass left and right. It was great. It was great. It was like one of those moments, like, you know, I've had a lot of like hum, like eating like humble pie moments where I'm like, fuck. But this was one of my glorious moments. You know, this is the reason why I keep doing mob, right? Cause it's like these moments where you just feel like great, you know? Um, not because everyone was kissing my ass, but because it was a really great project and Nike was really good to work with. The thing that's different between like my Nike and theirs is that like my logo is on this Nike sneaker. That's special, you know what I mean? It's also special to design something, be like, I wanna make this like purple and whatever. But to put your logo and to have Nike be like, you know what? Your logo is dope enough to be next to our check. Put that shit next to the swoosh. We're co-signing you. Okay. Sneaker number two. <laughs> this is a good one. Oh, I love this one. I really do. Oh, this is so great. Rip, Colette. I'm getting the hang of this unboxing thing now. <laughs> Rain is all excited. Well, because you never got it. You still want a pair, I know. <laughs> this was before the Nike, okay. Which is interesting that Nike would do it with me after Reebok, but you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm just creating drama, but um, the freestyle that I did with Colette. So this was, and you know, um, Sarah from Colette was like a huge, um, she was like my fairy godmother for a little bit. She really looked out for me. And um, it's funny cause the first email I just got, like I never hit up stores, like they would hit me up or whatever back then. And my, I was, I got an email like to info from Sarah at Colette and I was like, I didn't even know what Colette was. Like I had never even like really left the country. Like I was like, what the fuck is this? You know? 
And someone's like, that's Colette. Like, that's crazy that they're emailing you. And she was like, hi, I'd like to um, see your line sheet. So I sent it to her and then there was like the language barrier. And like, she wrote back and was like, okay, this is quite trash actually. And I was like, what? Like, excuse me. She's like, but well, I'm gonna take three of these at wholesale just for myself. And I was like, no, you're not. And she was like, oh, and I think she liked that. I was like, feisty. And then that's how the relationship started. It ended up being a really good one. And it was really good for Mob. Um, and I have a lot of gratitude towards her. So she came to me saying, Reebok, this was, so this is Reebok Europe, right? This had nothing to do with Reebok US. She's like, Reebok wants me to do a sneaker. I want you to do it with me to design it or whatever. So this is like the only like menage a trois collab I've done. Cause normally after like, you know, it's like three different people, like three different companies. It's like a clusterfuck, you know? But um, this was dope. This is really dope. And maybe it was because it was like a store and then like two brands. But she gave me, you know, uh, this was really fun to design because she just gave me like total control of doing it. And, you know, I was using the lips heavy back then, which I'm bringing back and I'm doing more of because it's like just so mob. Um, and they, they were numbered. I can't remember how many we made, but when you put them together in the bottom, it creates the lip and it's glittery and cute. Um, and this shit sold out so quickly, like really quickly, like an hour, they were all gone. Um, this is pair 27, that's my birthday. 27 is my lucky number, that's fucking crazy. Holy shit. No, I like really love that number. Um, so that was that, there was no drama, it was all great. I think, I mean, then, you know, I got to go to Paris a bunch of times because I was working with Colette a lot and I love Paris now, but um, yeah, this was a good one.